ever see Faker so deep into his career after all these years can still just win a semifinals game just like that, flashing on Ruler, making the big play. And one of the big things about Champ Select coming into this game after that is that given over the Azir and Faker having such a big impact there, one of the biggest aberrations in champion pools on either of these teams is that Knight has not played it all year long. He simply does not like the champion. He has played it in previous years, but none this year at all. And that plus the rel have been the two two biggest factors. Oh, yeah, and that was what I was wondering about, because owner has <laughs> has been has been pivotal, right? Like his individual play on the rail has been absolutely exceptional. Uh, coming into the quarterfinals in particular, I still had a lot of questions about his champion pool. After the Maokai game, I feel like those are still warranted, but his Poppy and his Rel have been exceptional. The, the key thing here for JDG is that I'm wondering if we're going to have a trade Jarvan for Orianna, and right now, that's what it's looking like with the Kalista ban. Certainly is. Taking the time here. If you give over Orianna, there's no way you want to also give them the Jarvan. The no, combo, you have to pick it. The combo is just too good. Have to seal that one away. They could then get Faker his Azir again into the Orianna if they wanted to grab it first, or they could go uh, for a support uh, or a jungle pick here. Dangerous position JDG put themselves in. The, the Vi and the Jarvan are two of the combos that you usually play with Orianna. And owner looks damn clean throughout the entire tournament on the Jarvan. Part of the reason we've seen it taken away so frequently. Is it something that T1 want to prioritize here? Are they comfortable taking another side of the matchup? The Rel was ultimately the ban from JDG, given how comfortable owner had been on it. But there is the J4, unsurprisingly. You got to pick it away. I also think that J4 with his ultimate makes going uh, or trying to opt into really aggressive 2v2 bot lanes with immobile carries a lot riskier. Uh, his ultimate can be such a powerful tool when you're playing things like, for example, a Varus. So they could they could replace the Jarvan pick here on the side of JDG with the Vi and ha still have that guaranteed engage that shockwave delivery system. gumiyushi has been so good on the Varus. He is he's combined with Karia for so many aggressive pushing lanes with it. Um, they have a chance to break that up. The Ash Varus that has been their go-to combo, but Karia has got plenty in his bag. He can dig deep for other things as well. Ooh. Baiting Kanavi locking the Belveth. That, so many dashes to dodge the Jarvan EQ, a favorite very often in the 1v1. It, it also really emphasizes level ones and level one invades and looking at Raptor steals. So now we're also even keeping that in mind, level one compositions <laughs> as we go into the, the, the possibly final game here. Additionally, we do see that Zayz will not be allowed to play Aatrox in this one. And now T1 are faced with an option. Do you want to pick something for Zayus? So they can try and pressure 369 in his position, or are they going to leave it and have the risk of his pool being pinched? So JDG are actually in a bit of a pinch here for the Aatrox because Deus on his Smurf has been playing Graves, which we saw a really strong counter to it already. I wonder if they're gonna ban away the Graves to protect Aatrox here. Some other counter picks to it that are pretty rarely seen are like the Fiora, uh, the Camille sometimes used as well see what they want to protect 369 with because Zeus has has definitely been one of the big uh, advantages that they can can utilize here. They're more worried about the Ash comparison that we were talking about with the Varus. Yeah. And I think uh, Zeus obviously a player not afraid to take these more volatile matchups. Busted out the Jace, a champion where you need to snowball, you need to press your leads. Did a fantastic job doing so in the quarterfinals. See if he goes for something similarly volatile in match point scenario. Ash band away for now. Again, it seems like just trying to limit the potential of this bottom lane to, to get free bot lane prior in the early game. Renata also taken off the board. And I wouldn't be surprised if T1 uh, keep hidden what Karia is going to do. Because let's not forget that it was Vera support specifically that Karia pulled out after which he said, please don't do this. You are not Karia. Your teammates are not T1. Uh, you should not try this at home. That is also a Zayus special into the Aatrox specifically and would set up a terrifying Wombo combo. Yes. Oh. <laughs> He's <doing> it! <laughs> Forget the Graves, we're going all in. The Yone. So they've got Jarvan plus Yone initiation here to set up for it. So much CC on the side of T1. It's gonna make playing Bel Belveth so difficult here. I mean, Belveth relies so much on being able to tank damage with the E and, and have more isolated fights and skirmishes. Ooh. But every member on T1 has ways to, to interrupt the Belveth E. 
And I am concerned for JDG right now because Zeri is not a strong champion in the early stage of the game. Boris is a notorious lane bully, and you've just given the freedom to carry a, to counterpick your support uh, pretty effortlessly. Lulu, good, obviously, but uh, can be outclassed by a lot of the ranged options. And Caitlyn, while not a traditional support, is one of them. I mean, we still don't know who's playing what. Like, given that it's Gumayushi, oh. yeah, it's going to be the Bard instead. And let's not forget, it was this Zeri pick specifically that got Ruler his first LCK win back in 2022. It was when Zeri was at the height of her powers. And this is a champion. He is insanely comfortable. It's Kanavi still undefeated on the Belveth. This is what JDG it's pulled out to try and deny T1 access to the finals. Even though JDG are on the blue side this time around, that has won all of the games, it seems a little iffy here. They do need to scale into this game, whereas T1 have a lot of playmaking options here. Aggressive lanes locked in, both in bottom lane and in top lane. And owner got the premier ganking jungler of the patch, Jarvan. Belveth, though, can get some pretty good level one leads. If you can go for a level one play, if you can steal away some Raptors, uh, we will see. A lot of pressure on JDG, no doubt. Opting for scaling, something that has done so well for them domestically and even internationally, not surprising. But T1's roster and the lineup that they have opted for in Champ Select is incredibly, incredibly explosive. Strong on the level one. Bard and Vars with a Halo Blades, incredibly oppressive if you do want to fight level one. This is going to be a tricky puzzle to try to solve from the side of JDG to bring us to a game five. And to me, Kanavi is going to be the key. He is the one that needs to be the bridge for JDG towards that mid to late game, where I still think the T1 comp has a lot of power, but that is where this composition from JDG is going to shine. When Knight and Ruler are hitting one, two items, they can single-handedly win fights. We've seen them do it countless times. And they have no choice at this point. Carrier walking in, getting a little bit of early chip damage. Rain of Arrows coming down as well, just to follow that up. The ruler should just be able to back here, not a big deal. A bit more money in the back pocket of Carrier. I imagine he gets all three stacks there, so... Probably can go back opt for a pot if he so chooses. Oh, right. forward. Kanavi definitely... A very good Belveth player. Played a lot of games of it, and their eyeballs are on those Raptors we we're talking about. But T1, well aware, trying to defend, should be able to do so. Karia's even made a recall. Look at the Bard coming down mid lane. Karia's kind of hovering at the mid ground here, just in case JDG were to make a hard push. But of course, with full vision, we know that the JDG bottom lane is down bottom, and so they're not going to go for the hard force on Raptors just yet. No, yep. the ideal world of starting enemy Raptors on Belveth will be denied for now, at least see what Kanavi can do to steal some of those away as we move later into the game. Early lane phase, have to see if JDG can get any priority here. Guma not opting for Hail of Blades, so not quite as keen to go for lane prio. Instead, trying to match the scaling that Ruler is gonna bring to the table with the Zeri. Yeah, going to be the lethal tempo and call as well. So him and Karia gonna be very happy to just take it easy in this lane. And we have already seen against LNG what Gumek can do on this very auto attack focused Varus. As uh, early laning phase is going to be really big. Duno missing, going for the healer, carry out for the ignite. And both junglers expected to path towards the bot side of the map. Early level two is there for JDG though. And for owner, we know how impactful he can be in the early game. It has been a story of junglers pretty much across the entire series. But for owner on this J4, a bit more pressure to make some of these early plays happen. Topside going well for Zayas here. Early levels for Aatrox, difficult. Dark and Blade cooldown is simply so long that it's hard to find good opportunities to trade back. Zayas stacking the wave here. Not a lot of dive threat, but can go for the Q3 if he wants a bit of extra poke. So tense here. With Zayas pushing in on topside, knowing both junglers pushing away from the top lane. Zeus getting a lot of harassment done under the tower even, using his aggressive E here as he's able to push up. Meanwhile though, bottom lane, supported by the junglers clearing down towards them. The Lulu Zeri early on, getting control of the minion wave. And being able to use that for their safety. Yep. Might have a fight towards the early scuttle as well. We do see T1 already placed some vision down there. 
Faker, at least right now, will have priority, but we'll uh, use that to go for a base instead. I don't know if Knight will actually let him, and we do see Missing and Ruler already trying to make their way over and ensure that Kanavi can get this early crab, and doesn't look like T1, at least for now, are winning. But Faker did get it back in, uh, made his way back to the midways, but will be behind on the play. Carry maybe just going to throw down a bit of poke. Cosmic binding to hit missing. Kanavi will grab the crab. Belveth, incredibly strong early on in the game. Yeah, pushing bottom lane allows BDG to come first as well. And he's going for the double here. We'll see about the meetup. Because Owner also trying to get in position first. Can he get to the pixel brush and have control of vision? He gets the ward down in it. And right. he's got smite as well, so he's got it. Now, priority there for Zayas as well, who's first on the roam if they do try to force the objective. So instead, Scuttle Crab traded one for one. Owner now turning his attention over to his Raptors. Zayas is just keeping this pressure up on the top side of the map. And, and I want you to pay attention to the amount of vision that has been set up here, allowing Zayas to really play so aggressively with this Yone and try and generate leads, which with the Graves was exactly the same way that we've seen the Aatrox be dealt with before. As long as you are aware, and they have been doing a good job of tracking Kanavi, Zayas should be able to push to his heart's content. Knight right, continuing to poke in the mid lane, but you're right. Control and support for Zayas in so many of these clutch scenarios, regardless of what champion he is playing, has been a, a hero and a oh. standout for T1 this tournament. As Karia, for now, just denying Missing's back, has just enough mana for the Whimsy to take him out to safety. And JDG and 369 have to be very careful this game, because if Zayas gets a lead this game, the Yone has a very easy time of getting set up by a Bard ultimate. Missing, denied again. There's no kill angle here. If Carrier can land a Bard ultimate later, set him up for an easy Yone o over the top, they can group Carrier him. might be the one in trouble. Journey comes out. Ruler going through. Playing with him. He can go over the wall. Yeah, big thing here is that the wave state obviously is kind of rough. We'll see if Ruler is able to actually shove it in but with the wave just now coming in. I don't think it will be able to without missing. Might have to give up some CS here. One thing that is really big though, and I've seen a lot of uh, H or sorry, uh, Zeri games come out as I think Zeus actually went for the. Uh, he did. The he went for the Fate yeah. CLD completely whiffed. Looked like a nice side step from 369. No flash burn means pretty favorable trade. But no one on T1 is 100% uh, secure in locking down this area, right? There's no Nautilus, there's no Vi, and that is something that Ruler in the past, particularly with the shielding that he's going to get from Knight, from Missing, has been able to utilize insanely well. Was of course a different era of Zeri. Uh, don't quite have as much agency as you did back then as Peria going for a play, but will get spotted on the ward. Kanavi coming in. Owner waiting in the darkness. Don't want to commit to the play there. They got to know. They're late on the bot lane roam. Yes, Karia gets out of lane, but for now, Guma forced to just catch that CS. Baker waiting as long as he can, trying to hold on to the shifting sands. Turning their attention to the bottom lane. Guma only level five. <laughs> Karia. The short tunnel. Yeah, if you've ever played Bard, that's a classic. That's a little stubby guy right there. Not going to do much. <laughs> that's why you normal cast and don't smart cast the Bard portal. It's the dragon nub. <laughs> just get a little. Do note, there are no teleports for either top lane or here. So if we do get a fight for this dragon, or at least for the scuttle, it will be exclusively between four versus four. Owner going in, decent bit of poke damage. Just the EQ as well as the iron spike whip. No level six again. Two minus six. Carry a flash to the wall, locking up nine. It's a clean play, flag drag, flash forward. Committing on a nine, the shockwave now coming in. Finger turning it right back. First blood, everybody get now. That's a one hell of a magical journey. They'll get the kill back on the owner, but now they're in enemy territory. Cosmic Binding is good, but here comes Kanavi. Locked up, nowhere for Faker to go. And JDG fire back, but Zeus on the top side going all in. And Still. Ruler is rich. Both of those kills going into the Zeri is exactly what JDG want. Get the Zeri super fed. You have the Lulu and the Orianna. Double supportive scaling here for the Pentakill machine. And it's specifically the stall from JDG that ends up being the big difference maker there. Guma doesn't initially join the fight when Karia goes in. And look at the heal and shockwave combo. Even with the flash, it's not enough. And it means that Guma doesn't actually hit his ult. JDG with the full health rush are able to cut off the escape. And Ruler getting fed on Zeri this early. I've seen countless times and it does not end well for his opponents. Yeah, that's about the worst possible thing that could happen if you're a T1 fan right now. Oh, yeah. 
Ruler's area getting ahead, definitely a big concern there. Able to go back by the noon. Quiver's Aegis now locked up. Fate Seal gonna take him out to safety. 369 not able to get in front of it and stop the dash. I like the call from JDG, you know, the, the full rotation up to the top side of the map, trying to play off of those two kills that they got so they can rush down Rift Herald for the Belveth, use those Belveth Void Links for pushing along with the pop and continue to snowball him. It also takes away a lot of the power that Zayus was having in this isolated 1v1. Now Kanavi on the Belveth got an early Herald. That's a best case scenario for JDG, and they're looking for more. Zayus no ulti, very vulnerable if they do want to commit for the all-in, but Owner and Carrier in the area. Right here beside him, level six around the corner for Carrier, but still needs a bit more. Faker over the wall, though, has been locked up by the Infernal. Chains above and below, coming up for the Belveth. Faker in trouble, not going to be able to get out of this one. The kill coming through for Kanavi. Yeah, that's JDG territory. Faker walks right in, and they welcome him with open arms. Teleport down to the bottom side to even catch the minion wave down here for Knight. So JDG are able to take basically everything there. The only thing they had to give up was one turret plate to Guma. You can see the continued play. JDG so badly want to use the early power of the Belveth when the Herald goes down to try and get as much gold into the Zeri as humanly possible. It's an incredibly heads up play, not giving Ruler a laning phase. Instead, just focusing on finding all this gold in these favored lane scenarios. He doesn't have to go against the Varus. Pulling further and further ahead. Standing on a ward currently. He's going to have the Q3. Doesn't look like he is going to go for it on the top side. He will. Canceling that one. Q3 can come out. He's only got a few more seconds of soul inbound, but Ruler will be able to just parkour his way out to safety. Good jump there from Ruler. If Zayas hits that Q, he probably tries to follow up with the ult and then carry it there as well. But he jumps out. No damage dealt, no problem for them. Easy reset afterwards, and very comfortable early lead here for JDG. Not only is it the magnitude of the early lead with the gold here, but it's the concentration of it in the exact perfect spot. Just, just continuously canceling <laughs> these backs. Actually pretty disruptive to the side of JDG. Yeah. We're gonna push one more wave. Stridebreaker now completed for Kanavi. He's very powerful. Owner still trailing behind, doesn't have the luxury of the extra assist or kill. But Owner will start up the Drake. Focus on the Dragons has paid dividends for T1 in the, in the entire bracket stage, excuse me. And that is actually courtesy of Zeus, right? If Ruler and Missing were able to get there back in early, I think Ruler gets back, picks up his uh, Storm Razor, and then T1 might not be able to get the Dragon. We'll be getting that though. Still think JDG is going to be very happy with how this early game has played out. Very early Storm Razor and call finish on Ruler. I think he was sitting at like a, what is it, eight? Yeah, 700 gold lead already this early on in the game on a pick that obviously scales insanely well. And early Drake is going to go to T1, but because it's so late, doesn't feel like Dragon stacking is going to be as easy as it was in the previous games. Yeah, and JDG, their eyes are just set on Ruler's inventory. They're like, we get a couple items on the Zeri, and then we will be able to take over. So the price of giving up a couple of early dragons, they're not as worried about because they have confidence they can win those later dragon fights and even stop any stacking that T1 start early. And while in the previous game, T1 had some phenomenal uh, team fight execution and do need that to lock down this Zeri. It's not something you want to have to rely on, these flawless engages. You want to be able to play things a bit more standard, a bit more by the book. And that's only going to get harder and harder as Ruler gets more items under his belt. Because we talk about the threat of JDG. They absorb your engage, they re-engage. That's Zeri in a nutshell. You go in on her, you don't kill her, she pushes ult, she kills your entire team. And a really big thing for T1, I think, is trying to get someone in side lane ahead. And that's why so much attention, so much attention has been paid towards Zeus. Because if he is unmatched in side, it gives you a pressure point to try and draw apart JDG. Because in the mid to late game, no one will be able to match this Yone in the 1v1. Um, but if he doesn't actually get a meaningful lead, and JDG are able to maintain control of the game, get early objectives, then T1 is going to be stuck trying to 5v5, trying to actually contest for some of these dragons, some of these barons, and it'll make it a relatively straightforward task for JDG. Again, particularly with Nine on Oriana, which has been insane throughout this entire series, really the entire tournament, and then Ruler on a Lulu powered up Zeri. Yeah, it's just a perfectly constructed comp here for the way that JDG like to play around their super carries. Meanwhile, T1 overloading topside as we get a teleport back to the tower from 369. Area thinking about it. Uh, that's going to be all that they do up here. Now, 
Zayas obviously pretty favored in the 1v1, easy for him to kind of dictate when they do and do not trade, but hasn't been able to break that matchup open quite yet. Maybe it'll get easier once he completes that first item. Luden's now completed for Faker. The crown for Knight, again, aware that he needs to survive on side lane, potentially against someone as lethal as the Yone. And yeah, facing Yone in the side lane is just a nightmare, even with Crown. It does take away, I think, uh, particularly from the engage potential of someone like Owner, as Zayas, he needs to play this aggressive. And you see, again, we've talked about this earlier as well, but it still remains true. There is so much attempted vision here from T1, just to try and ensure that this Yone can get to a decent state in the game. I don't know if it's going to be enough, though. Harold is going to be up in about 35 seconds, and I would expect both teams to heavily try and play towards that. For JDG, offers you an opportunity to get Ruder even further ahead and break open that mid lane turret in particular. For T1, maybe that's the break that Zayus has been looking for. Looking for that angle as carry again just continues to be a nuisance here. Magical Journey takes him out to safety. Gumishi just going to catch the wave in mid lane, so you can get priority here first. A minute and 30 seconds left on the Drake, yes. 10 seconds left on the second Herald. JDG get prio here. Expect they're favored on the objective, and you can see the one strong point for T1 in this pretty rough early game is still Zayas on the top side, on the Yone. Going to continue to track what he can get done with his lead. Constantly moving in, getting some turret plate money for himself, getting that pressure down for T1. The vision. But here it comes. Rift Herald's been started. T1 are here. Teleports are ready for both Faker and Knight. TP coming to the mid lane from Knight. TP coming into the pit from Faker. Unleashed just in time. Ruler slowed down just a bit. Objective getting lower and lower. Who's going to take it? Kanavi is going to grab it. Ulti coming out with the shockwave on the backside to lock up. Gumiyushi, owner goes in, but he's not able to get much done. Kanavi dipping and diving. Zayus finally going to catch the jungler, but Ruler for now is still completely he's alive. untouched. Kanavi is living. The lightning crash comes out, and it is time for T1 to get the hell out of dodge. Zayus has burned all of his resources, but continuing to step up will walk away, but JDG again, they get the Herald, they keep their jungler alive, it's a perfect exchange. And Kanavi does not die in those moments, missing, backing him up. They get the Herald again for the Belveff, and they're able to get the better hand of T1. Let's see if they can actually start snowballing with it, knock down some of these turrets, because Dragon coming up at only 14 seconds, Ooh. and T1 are trying to reset in time for it. Take a look at some of the individual gold. Lead on the top side, 1K to Yone. The ruler getting further and further ahead, that much closer to the Quick Blades. Now, T1 do have teleport advantage if Zeus can either get some space away from 369 or even go back to base. Zeus could teleport down to the Dragon Fight and kind of sacrifice the, the push on top in exchange. Also, another thing to think about always when you're playing against the Bard, Kanavi here does have Rift Herald, but Bard can just ult the towers to immune them and immune the charge and nullify most of the effect. Yep, five seconds till that ult is available for Karia. Bar Assault already available. Oh. Kanavi going through the portal! He didn't mean to click that! Oh, that's gonna cost him! Still standing for now! Will live! That's a magical journey indeed! I <laughs> yeah, but not the good kind of magic! And even though Kanavi is able to stay alive, that is... A lot of health gone for the jungler, and T1 immediately going to try and capitalize. Navi starting to heal up, has the red buff yeah, taken. contest. But there's no room for JDG to contest this one. The Herald going to be immediately dropped mid. Karius still has the ulti to deny the charge, but JDG barreling in. A lot of members here might be able to break the tower anyway. Still, they're going to break it. 369 caught up. Oh! Gumiyushi going to go in for the counter engage. The flash out. Karius flashing forward. Will not connect on the stun. Baker on the flank. Herald still there. Void Remora still there. Zayas finds the knockup. He finds two, but there's no follow up. He gets out the Lulu wall. Kanavi now stepping in. Knight there. Shockwave oh! comes back. The counter punch from JDG is too damn much, but T1 are still standing. T1 are still firing back. It's a one for one. Oh, these bites are just on the edge. Knight with the Shockwave to find them, but the counter kill again under tower. This time around, Kanavi's not surviving under tower twice. And this is reminiscent of game number three. Neither of these teams are giving up anything for free. And after the charge is denied, it's Zayas going in aggressively, but this is an Orianna that actually does have the crown and missing has his defensive cooldowns as well. Is able to wild growth himself. And then the shockwave, it looks like the fight is turned for JDG, but it's not enough for Zayas. Zayas running, has no fate sealed. 
Still a big threat in the 1v1 with the rest of the team now on the way. Looks like Holebreaker will be the second item choice for Zayas, so focusing on that side lane. Kanavi's had some wild clicks so far in this game. The magical journey and then also the uh, the crystal there going in. That was very close to being like the worst <laughs> click of the tournament. <laughs> but he lives but somehow. It's fine. He's okay. It's fine. We learned cats have nine lives. Belveth has three. You only get a couple of those before she eventually has to go down. All right. Well, we do have uh, the quick blades for Zeri, for Ruler here. Level 11 Zeri Ruler. Now that is a bit scary for T1. They have to give preference on the map right now to wherever Ruler is moving with JDG. The chase down potential of this champion, if you make a mistake, is going to be too much. Way too much. Yeah, I, I've, we've seen a lot of Zeris just barely get out and then turn a team fight. And it is also fitting that it's Knight and Ruler that I think are going to have to do heavy lifting. 369 just because of the counter pick hasn't really been able to have the biggest impact. And it was Knight and Ruler together that were able to deny that crucial fifth game from KT with an absolutely heroic play, which didn't involve Zeri, but did involve Knight's Oriana. And it feels like T1 should be good. When it comes to specifically the side lane, they are clearly trying to leverage Zayt as much as they can. But is JDG actually going to let them? And even in some of these team fights here, Zayus in a position to create a lot more pressure than 369's Aatrox. Uh, he, this is a this is a defensive Aatrox. This is the Gore Drinker Steric yeah. tankier version of it, not the lethality that we have been seeing. Whereas Zayus here will have big damage output. We saw the grouping of the ultimate on display in the last one. Yeah, as long as he can stack up that Q. Should be able to find backline access when combined with the Soul Unbound, the Fate Seal, the Ultimate, and E, respectively. Baker continuing to walk up on the top side. And now carry a caught out. No magical journey available. Ruler Ooh. walks in. Just gets a freebie. Knight serves up Ruler. Some extra gold on a silver platter. And now JDG just walking in, looking to take Tier 2. Boom is here, but... What is he going to get done? Now trying to lock them up. Has flash out to safety. Owner buying a bit more space for Guma. But they're being forced to retreat. TP already used. Zayas waiting over the wall, trying to find the jungler. It feels personal how many times this man has managed to survive, but the fate is sealed of Kanavi. T1 managed to punish in the mid lane. Carry a traded for Kanavi in the grand scheme of things. Baker says, I invest my TP. I take my kill. Uh, as they are able to collapse onto Kanavi there. And I think that is big. Could have been an opportunity for JDD on uh, dragon, to try and get Baron. more. Yeah, what is T1 going to do? They do have a... Um, they have a Yone and a Varus. They have a Yone yes. and a Varus. They eat this objective alive. Rage Blade's done. Look JDG have speed. zero vision. They have zero way into the pit. They have zero tools to get on top of them quickly. T1 are determined to take the objective. It's getting lower and lower. There's a portal in the back of the pit. It's a goddamn good heist. T1 get in. They hit the Baron. And they get the hell out. And we hadn't seen a lot of these, but the T1 Baron is back, baby. 21 minutes in, Kanavi goes down, and T1 might also be able to use this to set themselves up for an Ocean Soul point, a hole breaker Ocean Soul Yone. It's a nightmare. You can best believe Kanavi's going to hear it after this one. He better have some good plays around Dragon coming up. And that's the thing. As much as we talk about not being able to give JDG an inch because they're so proficient in the late game, the same is true of T1 around Baron. If there is any team that will go for this objective at a moment's notice, it is this T1 lineup. But JDG know they have priority access to the pit. Zeus waiting over the wall. Again, it is all eyes on Ruler. He has to be the difference maker here. A good shockwave. The Zeri follow-up could be enough for JDG to take the fight. But for now, they're focused on the objective. Owner zoning them away. 2.5k is getting lower and lower. They will burn it down. They get what they came for. T1, do they want to stay for the fight? Knockup coming through. Owner caught up. Flag and Drag will take him out to safety. Kanavi burning on the back side. Owner still standing. With Ruler with the lightning crash now trying to go in. But goes gold and carry by a bit more space for the rest of the team. Arrows coming in from the bars. Ruler incredibly low, but maybe. There's just maybe he can turn it back. But Guma's still standing tall. Oh. He can't walk in a rage. T1 starting to feel like an inevitability. Ruler Zeri. JDG in circles in these team fights. What? Taves flashing forward. Just trying to deny, just trying to zone them away. Blood in their eyes. They want everything. They'll break the tier one. And Zayas is just like, I'm flashing. I'm canceling backs. I'm finding a target. But that is.
is Soul Point. That is a Rebel Player and Power Play of 3.5k. And that is T1 Not setting themselves up for a possible final. Not a single T1 member dropping there. You have to look at both sides of this team fight. It sections off into so many different sick plays. First of all, though, is the Dragon. Guma Yushi combo arrow with owner to be able to secure it. Guma <laughs> at Worlds has been able to steal objectives and he's able to secure them with his team. Faker goes in for the ultimate, which gets Knight's uh, stasis here. And then Knight has to flash Zeus's ultimate that was over the top. Then Zeus just continues back up to the top side of the team right where Order oh, lives. The lineup is perfect there. They've locked up Ruler. That's all that they need. Zeus now stepping in. Zeus desperate to get the Q3, but he cannot find the angle. Ruler now retreating. T1, will they go for more? Flash in from Owner. Cannot be now in trouble. Wild Dog coming out. T1 find the angle. Barreling down the top side with the Baron. Ready to break the backs of JDG. The magical journey for T1 coming through. And perhaps the golden road coming to an end. And it was carry out it actually was able to hit his ultimate on Ruler in the fight. That's why Ruler couldn't do anything. The most fed member of JDG in that fight around the dragon wasn't there. The Baron now just times out. Kanavi's the only one that remains dead. But T1 with lightning quick speed takes so much from JDG. Baker now five kills to his name on the Azir. Collecting heads. Oh. Ruler jumps through the wall. And T1 are not going to let that one slide. Carrion nails him. Zeus with the follow-up. And T1 swarm on them. Gumayushi hits his ulti there onto Kanavi. They chase him down. Because Ruler had been chased out with so little health, they pick up the kill on the jungler again. And it's not done for JDG. They've come back from worse games. But just the level of dominance that T1 was able to show ever since that dragon fight, the gold lead now skyrocketed towards them. I think Zeus is going to be unkillable inside the moment that they get this Ocean Soul, and Kanavi needs to make sure that that doesn't go their way. If JDG win this game, it's going to be oh. off the back of a miraculous Zeri team fight. Knight Ruler, locked up. Knight is locked. The crown will not stop that. And he's only a knight. Faker knocking him down. Unstoppable. Carry a bard. He's got the hand of Midas. Everyone he touches turns to gold in the favor of T1. T1 continuing to press forward. JDG backs against the wall. They've come so far, so close to the golden road. But here in the late game, it's all eyes on Ruler. Time is on the execution. T1 not giving them a single moment to breathe, a moment to relax. Ruler clearing the wave as best he can. Guma getting stronger and stronger. The attack speed bar is starting to hit like a truck, shredding through the tower slowly but surely. Faker on the flank. And the big thing is, Ruler's flash cooldown, which I think is going to be an absolutely pivotal summoner, will not be up for when the dragon spawns. There is a window here, 41, where they can all in on this dragon, try and make sure that the Zeri won't be able to get away as consistently from the engage, from Zeus Gumiushi also finishing wits and build like this on it doesn't skill nearly as well as some of the more AP or crit focused builds. But right now, you are dishing out so much damage. T1. They have been faced with the LPL gauntlet. They took down BLG in the Swiss stage. They took down LNG in the quarterfinals. Looking at JDG here, can they do it? Weibo waiting for them in the finals. Kanavi taking the buff. Tension on each and every play that JDG are going to try to go for at this stage of the game. They cannot afford any more slip-ups, any more mistakes to be caught out. And it's so hard now because Carrier can just fish with Bard ults. T1 have the advantage. A massive gold lead, three Drakes backing them up. Four seconds to the Baron, six to the Ocean Soul. JDG have to be careful. Zeus coming up the river here. JDG he's gonna have to be perfect. He's going to start up the dragon himself. Kanavi getting chucked away. Zeus can start this one, draw the attention of JDG. They're forced to respond. They can't afford to give up the soul. Guma clearing the mid wave. T1 a bit split. Eyes on Ruler. Eyes on the shockwave of Knight. Kanavi stepping in. Flash to the side from Faker. Ooh. At the cost of very Kanavi. little. Owner walking what? forward, but Faker now dominating. Kanavi! A massive mistake. Carry it now going in. The Ruler's untouched. Goes golden and now Ruler. Looking to take over the fight. Ruler still standing. Guma still standing. Guma firing back. Ruler goes down. Guma's just better. Seu's now stepping in. Fate sealed. Or rather, Soul Unbound now taking it back. The Ocean Soul for T1. They get everything they want. It's the Death Cap. 
It's the death cut for Faker to damage. Unexpected. They're gonna get Soul. They're gonna get Baron. Run from it. Dread it. T1 are inevitable. Faker will come for the final spot. T1 will get the Baron. They will get the split push. They've got JDG on the ropes. JDG, they've got maybe one last fight in them. And then a few more after that if they want to claw their way back into this game. But it all falls apart. A single mistake, a single Kanavi. moment where Kanavi messes up, costs JDG so much. He tries to get the W knock up onto Faker. Faker flashes it to the side and then chops him down. And that is the signal for T1. They go all in. Carry on to Ruler. Ruler flashing then onto Guma Yushi. But Guma pops him. And it's the player on T1 that had the worst international debut in 2022, but it's him <laughs> that's been trying to keep and hold down the fort coming, and wins it there. Coming into this tournament, he said, me and Caria are the best bot lane. He is looking to prove it as he breaks the back of each and every LPL AD carry. Guma Yushi also said, when questioned, how will you stop Ruler? I won't. I will crush him! And he just did. And now, crucially, Ruler doesn't have his flash available. Knight doesn't have his flash available. Just shy of death cap. No real power there for the Orianna. Such a defensive build. I don't know if they're gonna have the damage, particularly with Ocean Soul. Ocean Soul Zayas on the side lane. Can't be stopped. He can be slowed, but he cannot be stopped without more members there. 369 will not be enough. JDG know that that's a losing prospect on the top side, so instead they will focus on the bottom side, but this inhibitor will be a continuous weak point. 369 finding the lockups. They are snapping back on the soul unbound. We'll just break the inhibitor. He knows what he's here for. It is slow. It is controlled. It is diligence. The hype moment over for a moment as Kanavi weaves in and out of the exchange, looking for a bit of redemption for himself. T1, explosive fight after explosive fight has put them in a position to close this out cleanly, clinically. Death by a thousand cuts for JDG. So much riding on these last minutes. JDG trying to defend their golden road as it crumbles before them. T1, the onslaught will not stop. Third inhibitor goes down. T1 pushing in. They're not done. They've got the Baron still. 36 seconds. 5K Red Bull Baron power play backing them up. Zayas finding an initial knockup, just a bit of poke. Single misstep from JDG and T1 can instantly fully commit to the fight. It's the shockwave. Kanavi getting lower and lower, falling apart under the pressure. JDG's hope dwindling. They've taken down BLG. They've taken down LNG. It is not LPL versus LCK. It is T1 versus the LPL. And they like those odds as they move to finals. Baker, over 10 years into his career, will head to another World Finals. At the head of this squad that has had so much success, but still chasing the cup. The highs and lows of this roster over the last two years. The hype in spring after they won and one of the best splits of all time and not able to deliver again at MSI, again at Worlds, again this year. And now they get another opportunity. And for Faker to beat Ruler here, to go on to the finals, in front of a home crowd, to return to Seoul, to return to the final stage after a tumultuous year, a tumultuous summer, where they looked lost at times, where Faker wasn't even there.